Reach your legs back, and you open your arms out to the side. And you do that again, you're pulling them back. One of the cues I like to use here is to not move the box as you begin returning the carriage. So the box stays, the box stays, and then it moves a little bit after her. <laughs> pull that aside, and pull back again. Now only come about halfway back from here. Pick your legs up a little bit higher, and then try not to move the carriage as you swan dive. Your chest down, your legs up. You do that a couple of times. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then return. <laughs> so, even without doing that, do you see the translation of this? Yeah. Which you have to on the back? I like my low back didn't feel any of it. It was all like. Because the straps help you to get into your upper back, which is what your arms then should do, right? So, as to your question, this was a very elaborate way of answering that, that you can go at it either way. We're only teaching movement patterns for people, right? Everything we do in here is, I think, an abstraction of something we do on a daily basis. I always use the example that when I pick something up, it's not right in front of me, it's a version of a saw, right? Because I need the same exact movement pattern in my body. So as much as my mechanist would say, oh, don't twist and don't flex your spine, where it's contraindicated for osteoporosis and whatnot. Yes, of course, we're not gonna do that with a kettlebell over your head and bouncing and aggressively, but what's the dot of that, right? How can I make sure that that person's brain still has that movement available to them? This is, why the same movement patterns are repeated on different pieces of apparatus for a different learning environment, for a different load, coming from below, from the top, from the side, then we flip the body around, yeah, da, da. Where do you start teaching something? Well, that's where you come in, right? Where your own intuition comes in, where your talent comes in and recognizing what is the best <coughs> learning environment. Sometimes it's the one with the least threat, meaning the body's the most supported, probably on your back, and then translated from there, right? Sometimes it might be on the mat for somebody. Somebody else it might be on the reformer. That's where you get to come in. So even though it's the same approach, you all get to be your own person as a Pilates teacher. And I think that's what makes this work so powerful, right? It's just an approach. It's not a carved in stone method. At least I don't think so. Does that answer your question? All right. We're officially out of time. Thank you.